Today in the workshop, we've got a Volkswagen Transporter that's in for a full service. So we're gonna go ahead and replace the service items. So if you're interested in seeing how this is done, stick around. So in this video, we're just gonna be replacing the service items. If you wanna see how the service inspection is done, then when that video drops, there'll be a link up here somewhere. So what we'll be covering today is our main filters. So we'll do our oil change, replace our oil filter, our air filter, our carbon filter and our fuel filter. So we'll go through all of those today and see how we get on. So before we get into today's video guys, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It helps us out massively and it also helps us to reach our first goal of 100 subscribers. So just wanna say a big thanks to those of you who have subscribed already and let's get into it. So let's start with something nice and easy, the air filter. First, we need to take off this multi plug and then we need to detach the spring clip that holds on the intake pipe. I'm using a special tool for this clip, but you can get away with using a set of pliers. The air pipe should just pull off, and then we can detach the clip and just put it to one side until refitting. There's two lever clips holding the top housing on, so just flick these off and you should be able to remove the top of the housing. Lift up the right hand side first and then slide it out of the grooves. When you've removed the old air filter, you want to check the air box for any debris or crud because you don't want something instantly contaminating the new air filter when you put it in. And when you're happy, you can just pop in the new filter. Then the top of the housing can go back on as easily as it came off. Make sure that you refit the air pipe correctly and don't forget to reconnect the multi plug on top of the air box. I'm happy this is all done, so I'm going to move on to the oil change. First, lift up the dipstick and then open up the oil filler. This will let air into the engine and allow for a quicker oil drain. Using a 19mm spanner, we can remove the sump plug and drain the oil. These sump plugs have a metal washer which is actually part of the plug itself. So that can mean that people often reuse these sump plugs, but we always recommend that you replace them. Make sure you stick around until the end of the video so you don't miss out on how to reset the circuit light. When you're happy you've drained out the majority of the oil, you can remove the drainer and then catch what's dripping in an oil pan. This means that when we loosen off the filter, any oil that's in the housing can drain down and out of the sump. I'm using a 32mm socket on two half inch extensions just to loosen it off. Draining the oil this way also lowers the chance of spillage when taking out the oil filter. Imagine all this dirty oil still sitting in your engine if we had refitted the sump plug. When the oil filter is loose, make sure you've got some blue roll handy just to catch any spills. We can just pull off the old oil filter from the cap and then we can get on removing the seals. It's worth checking if there's any characteristic differences on each end of the oil filter so that you don't put the new one on the wrong way around. With a small flat edge tool, you want to be able to just prise away at the old oil seals but without damaging the plastic. Remember, there's three oil seals on this setup, so make sure you have new ones that come with your new filter. Each of your new oil seals are different sizes, so it makes sense just to lay them out ready in the correct order so you don't make any sort of mistakes going back on. Be surprised to see how easy it is sometimes to mix up the two smaller oil seals, but 
it's easy enough here to see where they live. So with a little dab of oil on your finger, you can lubricate the new seal before sliding it into place. Always be careful and fit the new seals by hand. You don't want to risk it using a tool and risk stretching it or even snapping it. The same principle applies to all of the oil seals. I like to fit them from smallest to largest before fitting the new oil filter. Always remember to check that you're fitting this the right way around and then press it into place you should hear a click. Lubricating the seals on the oil filter should prevent them from catching as you try to tighten it up. But always make sure that you tighten it by your hand first of all so you don't damage the plastic threads. When you're happy that you've started it by hand you can finish it off with a ratchet. Remember that the torque settings for this is actually printed on the oil filter cap at 25 newton meters. It's only a plastic thread, so make sure that you don't over tighten it and always double check to make sure that you haven't pinched any of the oil seals. Now we can lift the van back in the air and fit the new sump plug. Again, you don't want to go too tight to this, the torque settings for these sump plugs are only 30Nm. When you're happy it's tight, you can wipe away any excess oil. I'm using brake cleaner because it's easily wipeable and then any excess evaporates. Now it's time to top up the oil. Let's do this with the dipstick still open so that the oil can easily flow through the engine. This is a 2 litre TDI engine with a DPF filter and it takes 7 litres of oil. There's a couple of variants on which oil spec you can use on this engine, so I'll put them on screen now. Again, when you're happy, we can put the dipstick back into place, put the cap back on and start the engine. Starting the engine allows oil pressure to build and the fresh oil that we've just put into the sump can now be spread throughout the engine. You should always start the engine first before checking your oil and remember you should only do this on level ground. So after starting it up, our reading is just below maximum, so I'm happy with that. Next up is replacing the cabin or pollen filter. So on the passenger side, our left hand front, there's a little panel underneath the glove box. There's three Torx 20 holding this in place and it should just slide off. This reveals the plastic housing for all the heating system. And now you can see that there's a flap there which is for the pollen filter and it's held shut by 5.5 mm bolts. You can see by the amount of debris and how black it is that this filter hasn't been changed in a while. This is what filters the air coming inside the car. So if this hasn't been changed in a while and it has build up, then it doesn't filter the air properly and this can cause a bad smell to be coming through your vents. filter easily slots in place, but make sure you check the markings on the side of the filter so you can put it in line with the flow of air. Then it's just a case of refitting the plastic cover and the two bolts that hold it on, and then the other plastic cover that hides the housing. This one, like most transporters, has been slightly modified, so you might find some additional wiring in this area, but it's best practice to just tuck it out of the way and tidy it up. 
and now onto our diesel filter. First, freeze of access, we need to move out this reservoir. So take off the multi-plug and we can remove these two Torx 25s that are fitting into the brackets. Gently moving it out of the way, you reveal the fuel filter. There's one 10mm bolt that acts as a clamp and it holds the fuel filter in place. So by loosening this off, you can provide some slack and you'll be able to remove the filter. With the slack that you've created, you'll be able to move the fuel filter up enough so that you can get your fingers onto the clips so that you can release the pipes. It's worth keeping note of which pipes go where. Each terminal has a marking on it which should correspond with a new filter that you're replacing it with. You shouldn't need any special tools to remove these pipes. I was able to do it just by hand. With the old filter free from its bracket, you can now fit the new filter, but always remember that you should put it in the same way that the old one came out, so check where the markings were so you can line them up with the corresponding pipes. If the filter is the wrong way around, the one-way valves inside won't allow the flow of fuel, so you won't be able to start the engine. This is where some people opt to fill the new filter with fresh diesel as a way to prime the system. We don't need to do this as we'll be priming the system with a diagnostic tool later on. The pipes just push fit back into place and you can put the 10mm back in and clamp it into position. And when you're happy, you can refit the coolant reservoir, but don't forget the multi-plug and the two Torx 25s. If we were to start the engine right now, it would start, but then it would cut out as soon as the air pocket reached the injectors. This is why, with the ignition on, we need to attach our diagnostic tool and then see if we can activate the fuel pump. To do this, you should go into Engine and Active Tests, and then activate the fuel pump. Doing this helps build fuel pressure and helps prime the system. Also, as a force of habit, I always cycle the ignition a couple of times because this also activates the fuel pump to build slight pressure when you're ready to start the engine. I will stress though that you do need to prime it with a diagnostic tool as if the engine cuts out and you cold crank it, that is a way to prematurely wear the engine and it can cause a lot of damage later on. But now that she's running and not cutting out, we can go ahead and reset the service light. So using my hotel, I can select hot function, oil reset, instruments, and then auto oil reset, where it'll reset all the parameters automatically. And she's all done. And that is it for this week's video, guys. I hope this has helped you. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know how you got on doing this job, and stick around next week for another video like this one. Cheers.